Leather is one of the earliest crafts, accompanying humans since the origin of the species. It is a durable, versatile and natural material, something of high value, accomplishing a whole range of uses. We appreciate the look, feel and even unique smell of leather. But a question may arise, how is modern leather made? We aim to add light to this by means of this concise video as we highlight the various key processes in making leather. The hides from large animals and skins from small animals come from many parts of the world and are a byproduct of the meat industry. Hides arrive at the tannery after being treated with salt to preserve them from bacterial action. The first process performed is to shake out the salt, avoiding pollution of the water system. Leathers are then soaked in lime in a process called liming. This chemically dissolves the hair, removes unwanted proteins and opens up the fibre structure. This process swells the leather considerably. Remembering that this material comes from an animal, it still has fleshy parts to it. Therefore, the next process is fleshing. The fleshing machine has many cutting blades and a revolving cylinder that cuts away unwanted fleshy matter and regularizes leather thickness. The leathers pass on to the next stage called trimming, where workers cut away useless or unwanted material from the edges of raw hides to give them a better shape or trim. A very important operation then takes place called splitting. As the leather is still of a thick dimension, this is the operation of cutting a hide or skin horizontally into two layers. The upper layer, the more external part of the animal, is called top grain and the lower layer is called split. Now the tanning process takes place. In this case, the hides are placed inside a wooden rotating drum specially designed for tanning. Tanning agents convert the raw fibres of the hide into a durable product, preserving it, improving its abrasion resistance and heat and flex resistance, able to endure repeated cycles of wetting and drying. Next, two large rolls squeeze out the excess moisture as the hides are fed through a machine. This is termed wringing. The leathers are called wet blue and may now be selected or graded as desired 
according to the destination of use. Once they have been selected, they need to be reduced and made uniform in thickness. This is done by a shaving method, normally a machine with a rapidly revolving bladed cylinder. The leathers are then re-tanned and dyed through, literally a further tanning treatment to modify leather's properties. The leathers at exit here are now uniformly dyed. The natural beauty of leather is made even more striking by the wide variety of shades which the modern tanner is capable of producing. The last of the wet operations is the fat liquoring to grant leather permanent softness, elasticity and flexing resistance. Now we come to the drying operations. The first step is setting out, uh, working over the grain surface to remove excess water and eliminate wrinkles. Leather drying can be continued by various methods. One of these is vacuum drying, where leathers are put on a large, hot, flat plate and another plate presses down and sucks the water out of the leather by creating a vacuum. This is a very effective method. Or there is toggling. Leathers are fixed on frames with toggles or clamps. The leathers then go through a dryer. This stretching can be done manually. Here is a machine that does it automatically. Another method is suspension drying. The hides are suspended from the ground on a wire or chain so that air has free access to both sides and move high up around the tannery complex. In this way, the leathers dry at room temperature. Leather is staked to make it open and softer. Pins pound the leather from both above and below hundreds of times as it passes through the machine, stretching and flexing the leather in every direction. This softens the leather remarkably. Some skins have natural healed scratches or parasitic damage in the grain of the leather. A very special flexible paste, stucco, can fill in such gaps. A light buffing or sanding leaves a clean, smooth surface ready for the subsequent finishing operation. The finishing department is the area where an alert and creative mind adds the final touches to enhance the natural beauty of leather. One method of applying the finish is the rotary spray. Several spray guns are mounted on a unit which continuously revolves over the leather. Unique patterns and two-tone effects 
can be obtained. Once the leather is dry, an artificial grain pattern is often created by embossing the leather using etched or engraved rolls. Grain pattern and softness can be further enhanced by dry milling the leather. Before being delivered to the customer, the leather is measured by a very precise machine. Bicast is a completely different system of finishing or enhancing leather, usually with split or heavily buffed leather, maintaining the same thickness and softness. The technique consists of creating the finishing film on a continual support of release paper. An adhesive is applied to the film, then the film is pressed on the leather. Finished leather is then removed from the release paper, displaying a perfectly uniform surface. In viewing these principal processes, you can appreciate the passion, dedication, technology and creativity that goes into working and finishing leather. <laughs>